real gases. So, PV is equal to NRT at all ranges of temperature and pressure if any gas follows is an ideal gas. If it doesn't follow, it's a real gas, right? What we did is, we plotted a curve between P and V keeping the temperature constant. Hey, which law? When I am talking about temperature constant, I am sure BT strikes your mind, Boyle's law. So, we know that when we plot for an ideal gas, the PV curve at a constant temperature, we get a rectangular hyperbola, something like this for an ideal gas. Let's see what we found out experimentally. Have a look. Well, this is what we found out when we plotted P versus B at a constant temperature. I'm sure something you can observe out here from this experimental curve that we observe for a real gas is the two curves are not coinciding. But yes, there is certainly one thing that you can observe. One is out here and one is out here. So let's say at lower pressures, of course, you can observe that the volume that we are talking about at a particular low pressure for real gas and ideal gas are approaching each other. Whereas when we are talking about higher pressures, the volume of the ideal gas and the volume of the real gas are, of course, not approaching each other. They are appreciably different. Can you observe? It is apparent out here that at very high pressures, you can observe that the real volume, that means volume of the real gas is greater than volume of the ideal gas. So, why is there this deviation? How can we find the deviation out? What were the different, you know, postulates which were not applicable? We need to find it out. We need to come closer to the reality. So for that, let's understand real gases. I'm sure the definition is crystal clear that gases which do not obey ideal gas equation under all the conditions of temperature and pressure. So any gas which does not fulfill PV is equal to NRT is a real gas when at all the ranges of temperature and pressure. Now, for more clarity, we need to have a look at very important PV versus P curve. Right? PV versus P at constant T, which, which law? Which law? Of course, BT, Boyle's law. So again, we are applying Boyle's law, all right? And you know that PV versus P, P, if we increase the pressure, what happens is volume decreases. You know that, you have seen it very well, that if we increase the pressure, what happens? Volume decreases. So we write the inverse proportionality, we know PV is equal to constant. So if we plot PV versus P, we should get a straight line, straight horizontal line parallel to the x-axis if the gas is an ideal gas. But look at the PV versus P curve at a particular temperature, which is 273 Kelvin or 0 degree Celsius. Check out for the real gases. Something astonishing is there. And I'm sure that you can see that the curves that we are getting are not the straight line, are not the horizontal lines, are not the lines which are parallel to the x-axis. Look at this out here. This should have been the case if PV was equal to NRT. Right? But this is not the case. What is the case is rather look at carbon monoxide, methane, hydrogen, helium. The curves are not the way there is this 
line out here. It's It should have been like this if the gas would have obeyed Boyle's law. But of course, there is some kind of deviation. We need to understand this deviation now. So let's make the observations, right? I'm sure you have observed very well that at constant temperature, PV is equal to constant. Boyle's law is what we are applying. Also, you can obviously see that for an ideal gas, PV versus P will be a straight line parallel to the x-axis. But what do you observe? You observe that for real gases, PV versus P is not a horizontal straight line. Cool. We made these observations already. But now we need to understand the real gas curves. So stay with me. I am going to divide these kind of curves in two parts. First one is these lines which are above this ideal gas line. Okay. So have a look at hydrogen and helium. This is case number one when the PV is directly proportional to P. As we are increasing the pressure, as we are increasing the pressure, PV is also increasing, isn't it? So, look at these, you know, curves for hydrogen and helium. This shows something very striking. I'll tell you the relevance of this kind of the curve. Right now, what you observe is as the pressure is increasing, the PV is also increasing. Mind you, temperature is kept as 273 Kelvin. It's an isotherm that we are observing for two of these gases, helium and hydrogen. You can see that the lines, the curves are above this ideal gas line. Right? Next one. Have a look this at this one. Here, there are two striking things happening. As we are increasing the pressure, first the PV decreases. First the PV decreases. And then it increases. With the further increase in pressure. Right? It takes a dip. And after it has attained the minima, then what happens is it again starts increasing. So, I'm sure you can see deviation term coming your way. So, there can be either negative deviation or positive deviation. So, how to understand deviation now? We understood that real gases are real, whereas the ideal gases are hypothetical or conceptual, theoretical. We have also understood that the real gases do not obey PV is equal to NRT at all ranges of temperature and pressure. When we saw experimental curves of PV versus P, we found out something very, very striking. We found out two types of curves where when we were increasing the pressure, PV was directly proportional. PV was increasing as well. And the second one, when we were increasing the pressure, PV first decreases. And then with the further increase in pressure, the PV also increases. Now, we need to understand Z, which is compressibility factor, which helps us in understanding the deviation. So, what is this compressibility factor that I am talking about? It is nothing but the extent to which a real gas deviates from the ideal behavior. What does it tell? It tells about the extent. Of what? Of the deviation. Deviation between what? Between the ideal gas and real gas behavior. Alright? Now, observe something very important. I have written the term Vm out here. Right? What is this? So, you know that whenever we take moles equal to 1, volume occupied by the gas is called molar volume. So, molar volume is the volume occupied by the gas when moles are equal to 1. You know that at STP, we take the molar volume, volume of 1 mole of a gas as 22.4 liters, isn't it? Some basic concepts of chemistry. So, have a look. We are writing Z is equal to 
the molar volume of the real gas divided by molar volume of the ideal gas. Right? Also, do you remember PV is equal to nRT? If I am keeping n equal to 1 and we are talking about ideal gas, this becomes V molar ideal, right? We get V molar ideal is equal to RT by P, right? Why don't we substitute? Let's substitute. Do you see that if we substitute the value of molar volume of the ideal gas, this is what we get. P into molar volume of V of the real gas divided by R into T. This is what is Z, the ratio of PVM, that is pressure into molar volume of the real gas divided by RT. This is the compressibility factor Z, or we can simply say molar volume of the real gas divided by the molar volume of the ideal gas.